the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, Guy Ritchie's most recent spy action comedy, delves into the first ever Special Forces mission, which served as a model for many of the contemporary Special Forces groups in use today. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, starring Henry Cavill, Alan Richson, and Isa Gonzalez, tells the highly fictionalized account of Operation Postmaster, a genuine WWII operation carried out by the British Special Operations Executive. The main goal of the film is accurate to history, even though many of the details, especially the highly stylized violence, disturb reality, leading a group of agents on a clandestine mission to take down three ships vital to Nazi U-boat operations is Major Gus March Phillips. They meet two operators who are already in Fernando Po, the seaside city in Spanish Guinea where their target is based, after rescuing a crucial team member from a Nazi jail. With most of the Nazi soldiers that would have opposed them trapped in a warehouse due to the team's successful infiltration into the city, they had enough time to capture the three ships they were tasked with sabotaging without suffering any casualties. Why Operation Postmaster leads to the arrest of Gus March Phillips and his group. After their operation is completed, Major Gus March Phillips and his squad are arrested by British authorities, despite their success and Winston Churchill's support. Despite the Nazi presence there, the team's intrusion into Fernando Po to destroy the Nazi ships was legally a violation of Spain's neutrality and WWII, given the mission's location. Even though Winston Churchill advocated for the use of dubious legality and unorthodox methods, March Phillips and his group were acting beyond the purview of the British government. Since the commanders of the British military were not informed of their goal, they were effectively operating as pirates without any known ties to a military organization. They were arrested and treated like criminals as a result. An action such as that being directed by a big international government would be totally out of place. Therefore the arrest also served to preserve a degree of plausible deniability. March Phillips and his group breached the law in the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, but to those who didn't know why they were there or who sent them, they were just breaking the law. Why Winston Churchill took such a risk during Operation Postmaster Winston Churchill's career as Prime Minister may have come to an end if it became widely known that he had circumvented not just the traditional norms of warfare, but also the military experts and commanders of his own nation. Should the real motivations behind Operation Postmaster come to light, Churchill would bear the brunt of the entire scandal. It would have encouraged espionage and sabotage against Great Britain and may have resulted in more severe retaliation from the Nazis. Given how bad things were in Britain, Churchill was ready to take the chance. Britain was running out of supplies and was being destroyed by the Luftwaffe when Operation Postmaster was carried out in January 1942. Aid from the United States and Canada had become nearly impossible due to Germany's U-boat fleet. Therefore the chance to destroy one of the most significant ships for U-boat operations was too excellent to miss. His risk paid off when the mission made it possible for American assistance to eventually traverse the North Atlantic, rescuing Britain in the process. How the true story differs from the end of the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare Not every member of the movie squad had real-life parallels. Gus March Phillips' small-scale raiding force was the genuine unit that carried out Operation Postmaster. Examples of true SSRF troops include Jeffrey Appleyard, Henry Hayes, and Alan Ritson's very vicious Anders Lassen. However, two other SSRF soldiers were added for the film, Freddy Alvarez, who played Henry Golding, and Mr. Heron, who played Babs Alusanmilkun. The conclusion of the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare mentions Marjorie Stewart as the future wife of Gus March Phillips, however there is no proof that she was involved in Operation Postmaster. The spectacular and violent escape that the SSRF performs at the end of the film is one of the biggest deviations from truth that the film makes. As the spacecraft were being taken, there were actually no attempts to stop them, and the job took around 30 minutes to complete. Danny Sapani's pirate Prince Kambali Kalu and the whole storyline between Isa Gonzalez as Marjorie Stewart and Till Schweiger's Heinrich Luer were made up for the film. The actual SSRF was included in the film to emphasize their renegade character, although they were not taken into custody when they returned. What followed the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare for Gus and his group? Operation Postmaster demonstrated that tiny black operations forces may not only be useful in WWII battle, but they might even be required, as shown in the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. The majority of the squad continued to work together after the mission was successful, participating in more missions with the SSRF or other specialized military groups. Regretfully, only few of the team's known members made it through the conflict. A few months after Operation Postmaster, a raid along the coast of occupied France during Operation Aquatin, Major Gus March Phillips lost his life. Graham Hayes made it through the assignment, but not before being apprehended and put to death. During the last several months of World War II, Anders Lassen served as a highly decorated soldier for Great Britain before being slain in 1945 while helping to liberate Italy. After rising to prominence in the Special Air Service, Geoffrey Appleyard's aircraft vanished during the Allied invasion of Sicily, leading to the suspicion that he had passed away. Marjorie Stewart lived till 1988 and went on to become a well-known actress. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.